everyone and happy Wednesday. I hope you are excited for an amazing webinar to come from our NX and Solid Edge expert, Manny. I am so happy that you have decided to join us today. So I'm going to get started with a brief overview of who I am and then we will go ahead and get rolling into Manny's webinar. So my name is Karina and I am a digital marketing coordinator here at Swoosh Technologies. I'm always working behind the scenes, conducting events, posting on social media, uh, creating blogs and content, or in this case, being your webinar host for today's event. Um, a few little fun things about me. In my free time outside of work, I do photography, I sing and play piano, I love visiting local coffee shops, and I of course enjoy traveling and experiencing new places. To get the conversation going, I would love to ask you all the very same question. So I just answered what my favorite hobbies are and things to do outside of working, and I would love to ask you all the same. So there is a chat section here. You can see this um, within the webinar screen. So if you go to the chat section, please answer that question. So what do you like to do in your free time? What is something that uh, inspires you? Something along those lines. So go ahead and put your answers in the chat. We'll get the conversation started. Moving along, you can see our technical application engineers here. They are product experts who help with support, webinar and video content, uh, blog creation, and also our classroom training. So with backgrounds in NX CAD and CAM, Solid Edge, and Team Center, uh, there are years and years of experience here among our team between everybody within our company. So um, they are great with helping for anything that you need product related. So something that's really exciting about Manny is that he's pretty much looked at as an NX and Solid Edge superhero, so to say, within the field. Um, that comes with his, you know, years and years of expertise, and that's why we like to say that these are his superpowers. And before we get started with his demonstration, I would love to just cover a few of those. So number one is that he is a super user of Solid Edge and NX with 16 years of experience identifying solutions and developing and delivering technical demonstrations such as the one that we are about to go into, as well as implementing extra support needs as a whole. Number two is that he is a pro at resolving customer issues, and that is one of his favorite things about working here at Swoosh. It's something that he gets to do very often, and he loves just helping people and developing solutions that help uh, create better productivity. And with that, people consider him as kind of this, you know, solid edge and NX warrior, so to say. Number three is that Manny is an impeccable trainer. So we have a ton of class training here at Swoosh, whether it be for NX CAD, NX CAM, Solid Edge, or Team Center. We offer a wide array of classes, whether it benefits you or your company. And Manny happens to be one of our trainers on our team. And he is viewed as a great trainer. He gets great reviews every single time we, we conduct classes with him. So if you are interested, you can go ahead and head to our Swoosh website. If you go to the tab at the top where it discusses class training, you can go ahead and look at our class schedule. And then with that, you can also select all of the classes either by field or by uh, product, and you can go and look through the classes that we, that we currently offer. Another option is also reaching out to us personally, and we can also help with any class training needs. So not only is Manny viewed as kind of the superhero at work between everything that he knows and his knowledge, but he's also a superhero at home with his family. He has a wife and children, and with family uh, always being at the top of his mind, he enjoys spending quality time with his family and with one another, being outdoors and creating new memories, and also experiencing the hidden gems of downtown Chicago, which is where he currently resides. So today Manny's focus is going to be teaching you about Solid Edge in a multi-CAD environment. And on the agenda includes the few points that you can see on the screen here. So we have methods of importing CAD data, an overview of modeling paradigms, history of part modeling and synchronous technology, and key feature functions of an imported part from any CAD system. Um, and don't forget, we also have a moment for Q&A at the end, so please be sure to post any questions that you may have throughout this event in the chat section of this webinar. Uh, Manny will answer those once he's finished with his presentation. Before we jump right in, please just hang tight a little bit longer as I have a few announcements that might interest you as a Solid Edge user. 
So our next upcoming Solid Edge Fundamentals class will be set for April 4th through 7th. This class is perfect for those in a beginner stage to immediate users who are looking for becoming proficient in solid modeling. The course covers fundamentals of CAD software and prepares users with skills needed to seamlessly navigate the platform, uh, while also working with parametric models and parts and assemblies. Uh, the key takeaways of this class include the use of synchronous technology, 2D drawings, and the creation of 3D parts and assemblies. We also have a Swoosh weekly and monthly newsletter, so you can join that if you haven't already. Just go to our website, www.swooshtech.com, and scroll to the bottom to sign up so you can stay in the Swoosh scoop. Lastly, I have a big surprise for all of you Solid Edge users. Uh, we will make these announcements concluding Manny's presentation, and they are well worth the wait, so don't go anywhere. I will announce those right after his demonstration. Again, I would love to thank each and every one of you for attending today's webinar. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Manny or want to save his contact information, go ahead and capture the QR code on the screen and you can save that directly to your phone. You can also just shoot him an email if you have any questions or lastly, you can go ahead and post those in the chat section of this webinar during the event or at the very end when we have our Q&A section. Without further ado, I would love to pass it off to Manny so he can present topics in Solid Edge in a multi-CAD environment. Manny? Thanks, Karina. Good day, everyone, and welcome. My name is Manny Marquez, and I'll be conducting today's webinar. Today, we're gonna to be talking about thriving in a multi-CAD environment, design changes from one CAD system to another, and working with imported CAD files. Today's topics include multi-CAD environment, methods to import CAD data, overview of both modeling paradigms, part modeling in a history and synchronous technology, key feature functions on an imported part from any CAD system. All right, so let's get started with working in a multi-CAD environment. You have your Inventor, PTC Creo, Katia, SolidWorks, Files. You open that up traditionally uh, by simply going to the file open and open it up, right? Now, introducing Accelerated Share. Secure cloud storage, secure collaboration across sites and geographies out of the box, and no IT infrastructure. Collaborate easily with design data that was created in different CAD formats without the need of translators or special tools. So basically what you do is you add users to your account and give them the option to uh, either write, markup, or full access, and they'll be able to upload the files into the Accelerated Share. Now, once you're in the solid edge side, you're able to connect with the Siemens connector. There, what is gonna happen is it's gonna sync your desktop with the Accelerate Share and or upload them from your Accelerate Share cloud base graphics user interface. And then that will sync up automatically with your desktop. Uh, Accelerate Share has a rich uh, set of collaboration features, secure storage, uh, desktop file syncing, permission-based project sharing, task management, engineering-centric view and markup, uh, augmented reality, AR, messaging and notifications, any device instant access, multi-overwrite protection, and connection to Team Center. That's a really nice one right there. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you a quick uh, overview of the uh, whole scenario of this that encompasses the whole collaboration tools in action. So here you're going to go ahead and log into the uh, uh, accelerate share if you want to go ahead and start a project here you can simply tell it go ahead and give it a name in this case gonna be a boiler create project you could give it a description as well and then you go ahead and upload the files and these are PRT files simply go ahead and uh, upload them and you can see them being synced up in there and once you're done that uh, you see everything all your projects are there and then now you go to your connector which is basically the tool that syncs up your desktop you can select the project and also select the files such as what, what you which which files you want to work with and say okay and then you make sure you go back to your now the uh, desktop here to sync up and see the, the files there and you go ahead and also drag them in there as well and this is obviously the desktop and now you can see them being synced up in there and then once that's synced up now you go back to your accelerated share and there they are and now you'll be able to see them there now you go ahead and share a project here as at the user. In this case, it's gonna be David. You see that right there, the options you have to access level. 
And once you have that, then that person has access to that particular project or file. Then you could be able to see them in the Accelerate Share. You could go ahead and hide the parts, zoom in, explode the parts if you wish to see every component inside there, how everything's put together. You could slice through it and you can see that move that handle there, move it uh, in and out. And you could basically do X, Y, and Z uh, and then basically also measure that as well. So it gives you the ability to do uh, whether inches or uh, millimeters. Uh, and obviously you want, the next step is you want to go ahead and mark up a part. So you want to go ahead and show it only here. And when you do that, I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, specify a specific location that you want to add some uh, kind of a, a markup there. So I want to create a cutout here to reduce uh, weight and cost. So you go ahead and save that markup. And then when, once you're done, if you look at the top, uh, if you look at the top right here, uh, right hand corner there, you have markup views. That's going to basically uh, record every uh, markup that's been done. So every, it's basically you could trace this to whoever made that uh, you know markup or anything like that. So now you, that you've done that, uh, now the next step is to go ahead and uh, send a message to that particular person you want to have that uh, the task management to send that to that particular person you want that cutout to be uh, and, and so forth so they could do that obviously in their CAD system whether it's you know either native or other CAD system whatever it may be. Uh, we could have the, the date when you want to do that obviously you wanted to do it at the specific date now you have that option there as well and also the ability to go ahead and send that uh, an AR so you can have the customer see your product or their product uh, and then just kind of visualize how it's going to look in their facility or whatever the case might be. So not only that, you have the ability to have an instant in any device, whether it's a laptop or a, any mobile device. So it kind of summarizes uh, Acceler Share offers rich set of features that, that aid in every, everyday collaboration. This is how you thrive in a multi-cat environment. Next, let's take a look at importing files into CAD and modification of geometry. Uh, to understand how features and sketches are, affect geometry, let's review the process in detail for history parametric CAD systems. Uh, let's go ahead and go over the history-based uh, modeling overview. So uh, the command basically uh, starts everything, right? It's command, it's command specific that starts the process. There you select uh, the surface or plane that takes you into a sketching environment. There you would draw or modify your profile. Uh, the dimensions drive the sketches, the sketches drive the features. And once you've done your uh, whatever you need to modify, you come back and exit the sketching environment. And obviously you are see your feature where it's up to that point where you, you created that modification, everything under that has to be generated, right? So every feature has to be regenerated. And basically once that's done, you're finished with that particular uh, functionality as far as modifying your feature. Uh, workflows are very similar to other CAS systems. So now let's take a quick look overview of synchronous technology. It's a direct modeling approach driving design intent without history. So there is no sketching environment. You draw profile directly to the planar surface. A region define or cut, uh, no need uh, to select a command. In other words, the whatever region you create, that's gonna define the cut or extrude. Once you select that, uh, no obviously no need to select a command. Uh, the, the, the dimensions migrate to the solid. In other words, once I've done that, you can see here, that uh, my dimensions went from my sketch to my solid. And now modifications are, are done directly to the model. And you can see that being done right there. Uh, sketches don't drive features, they become reference sketches. In other words, once you've extruded that region and that sketch becomes a reference sketch, you can see that right here. Uh, you could go ahead, either delete them if you wish to do that, you don't have to, uh, or you could restore them if you wish to reuse them again. And now you're working directly with the model. So you can kind of see a little bit the difference there between synchronous technology and history-based parametric uh, modeling overview. Now that you have a good understanding of the workflow in history, parametric, and synchronous technology, 
uh, we'll take a look at, at ways to open imported CAD files. Let's review that workflow. All right. So in order to do that, you use the data migration tool. That is for Inventor, PTC, and SolidWorks. And that is if you want to uh, use this tool to migrate assemblies and all, uh, in this case, SolidWorks properties, attributes into SolidEdge. Uh, let me show you the, the migration tools features. So in the part environment, everything that comes in this, again, this is only using the migration tool. Uh, that'd be uh, for part, uh, part file properties, the metadata will come along, will come through, multi-bodies, part configurations, whole databases, uh, recognize, recognition, uh, feature gr uh, grouping, component colors, material database, that's very important there. Uh, on the assembly, you have uh, assembly component positions, assembly file properties, metadata, assembly configurations, assembly relationships, assembly patterns in, uh, as groups, flexible assemblies, assembly features. Uh, on the drawing, you have the drawing file data, uh, drawing view of file properties made of data, drawing view linked to model. This is a really, really nice feature here because obviously you want to have whatever was created, in this case SolidWorks, you want to have your model that's linked up to the drawing, which is really, really powerful tool there. Uh, dimensions automatically attach to the drawings. Or you can open as is uh, as need basis. Right? So in other words, if I go ahead and simply go to the solid edge, in this case browse, and then go select the file type that you want, you can see that you got to start with SolidWorks, SDRC, ProE, Inventor, you got the neutral ones right here, IGES, CATIA, AutoCAD, uh, ACES, NX, all the way up to the top here. Obviously, these are native format there. Also, we have a batch processing. Uh, uh, basically, the way you do that is you go ahead and, and, and point it or a folder where all your, in this case, SolidWorks files are at. You select from what type, uh, in this case, SolidWorks again. And you just point to it and say, okay, I want all of those. You have options here to say what the, whether you want that to be um, you know, all files in selected directory, select files. Uh, and that's once you've done that, you go ahead and click on the uh, uh, process here and you just maybe leave it overnight depending on how many files you have you, you might want to leave that overnight because it, it might take a while so let the process do uh, let the batch processing sample kind of work this way and get all your files convert over um, all right so you can see that uh, you see all the same uh, uh, files that you want to uh, convert over all right so just so you know uh, no part or assembly file properties will uh, come through using or uh, all the metadata will not be coming through migrating through if you use this open as need basis or using the the batch processing option here okay so after you imported your model now what do you do when trying to modify a part right so um, I would like to kind of maintain the design intent that was defined in the original history model uh, also, um, I kind of want to show you uh, how, to how to make a modification on the native history parametric system so you have a good understanding and comparison to both modeling paradigms. Let's take a look at both methods when you modify a part. All right, so we're just going to go over a quick overview of how to mod uh, make a modification parametric and a workaround when you run into issues. You'll see that uh, when I'm talking about there. Uh, and keep in mind, this is only going to happen if you're using, uh, using your native CAD system, right? So I'm going to go ahead and show you the demo. All right, so go ahead and switch over to Solid Edge here. And basically, the way this starts, right, you go and select the feature, uh, edit the profile, and obviously that takes you to the sketching environment. And uh, when that happens, so obviously you, you provided a design intent here, right? In other words, I want a quick modification to that dimension. Obviously, you could add a number there. Obviously, I want that to be minus uh, one, uh, point 0.125. That's going to be a 0.54 uh, value there, which I know that now at this point, I don't have to do the math there. Just enter the value there. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that uh, horizontal vertical relationship there, which obviously that was my intent to do that because I want to make sure that was maintained vertical, as you see there. But obviously, I'm just hitting delete them to do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply a new intent, which means that I want to add an angle to that. So I'll go ahead and apply a dimension there, and obviously add a value there. I'm going to make that 99, enter there, and do the same thing the other side. Now I could have done this um, 
uh, intent where I could maybe mirror that over and maybe have one and do the other one automatically. But sometimes that happens. You don't think a little bit sometimes what might happen. So uh, I did both here. So now once I uh, got out of the sketching right and realized that something happened here, didn't realize that that other feature or that uh, protrusion didn't go along and it stayed where it was at. So I need to come back again, modify that, and say, okay, where did I need to go and fix? So I find the dimension that's kind of uh, maintaining that, that distance there. So then I'm going to basically do the same thing. I want that to be uh, minus 1.25, bring that back in. And the value is going to be 406. So I'll go ahead and do this, exactly the same thing on the other side there. And again, I could have done that too. If I had mirror everything to the other side, I would have probably would have done that as well. Just kind of FYI there. Uh, things of what you know if you want to kind of think ahead a little bit pre-plan your design intent uh it kind of happened again here uh when and actually missed that uh, the center uh cutouts right there and, and again i i could have probably used the concentric uh relationship on the sketcher so that way if it did it will maintain that radius uh concentric from that center of that hole right there uh, again but i didn't happen again i, I did this intentionally just to kind of make a point here that this is where you'll see why I'm, uh, why I'm doing this in, in a second here. And, uh, so now I know that value there was uh, 0.54. And now that I've done that, however, um, notice here that uh, there was a gap in there. And uh, not only that, but also my uh, the rounds is missing there too as well. So I'm going to come back and fix that and just figure out what happened there. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and select that feature again. Go This time I go to Dynamic Edit. I'm still technically in the sketch, modifying that sketch. So now I'm going to just push it up a little bit, uh, 0 0.317. So it, it kind of uh, cleans out the, the gap there. Now notice there uh, that uh, the, the radius came back and everything's fine. That's the way exactly what I planned to do, or my intent was to do, have something like that. So now once I'm done with that, I come back and, um, and modify the bottom uh, features here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, modify that. And again, I'm going to use the edit, dynamic edit. Uh, again, still technically using the sketch to, to modify that by kind of more of a 3D uh, look and feel. Uh, so I'm going to bring that up a little bit further. So because my intent was to bring those up, those ribs uh, up to the other level there. And obviously I'm going to compensate for that at the bottom here. So that way I, uh, it's obviously you want them pushed out all the way to the end there. But notice what happened here again. I realized that something happened. I said that was not my intent. Now I have an undercut there. Was it's obviously going to make it really hard for manufacturing. So I need to come back and uh, work with that. So I'm going to go back and select the feature, and I know what I need to do. Uh, and I'm going to back and modify that. And this time I'm going to go ahead and extrude that. But this time it's going to be uh, uh, both directions symmetrical, and just give it a number. And as long as that number is past that the other value or the other step there and which it is there but then i ran into another issue here um i noticed that uh, my uh, rounds are there not there so i go fine i go back and modify that and then reselect that and obviously i want to make sure i select the feature option so i could happily i don't have to go select every single uh, edge there uh, you can see that uh, they're gone they're not there because they didn't exist at that point right uh, again I'm going back to that history where i need to go back to that point select them and now it's added them in there for me, which is great. Okay, now it's there. There. Uh, the next step is I'm going to go ahead and add a draft. So I'm going to go ahead and select that surface there. And then obviously I don't want to select uh, the chain there. I want to make sure I select the face because that's going to be in the separate uh, faces there that I want to create the draft farm from. And then I'm going to tell which direction. Uh, obviously, I get this indication that something has failed. Uh, and I'm going to go back and say, okay, fine. I think I need, I think I need, I know what I need to do. So the trick is here, I'm going to go back to that step, that uh, step in, in my history tree here and go to that point that's time stepped in that point and, and, and uh, go back and actually add those draft here. Because again, like I said, I'm going to go back to that point, the time step and the history tree there so that I could come back and add that here. So now I'm able to come back and place it there. You see it when added in there. And I notice I need to come back and right click on that and go to. So in other words, I'm going to go back to that round there and done. All right, so that's how I went and create a quick modification on my native uh, part. I was using parametric uh, history-based uh, parametrics, and that's how it's done. All right, so the next one is 
review of modifying a part in synchronous technology using importer file. So this is like a little different. Obviously, that one I showed you earlier was obviously doing that in a native CAD system, whether it's you know SolidWorks, Pro E, or in this case, it's obviously Solid Edge. Those are the things you will run into uh, in the history uh, history of uh, modeling uh, paradigms, right? So and here uh, we're gonna slightly do a little bit different here. Uh, so that way, it's, uh, at the same time, it's going to be part that was imported from SolidWorks. So I still want to maintain the design intent based on uh, geometry selection, uh, define holes, define uh, patterns, uh, solution manager, what happens if you add uh, uh, dimensions and you want to modify that or when it's fully constrained, and add, add uh, face relate. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that uh, and basically walk you through the steps on how to go ahead and uh, browse for that particular uh, SolidWorks part in this case. And again, it could have been any other CAD system, SOLIDWORKS, PRO-E, CATIA, NX, uh, but uh, then we just kind of go and show that though, the options that we have there to open up all the different CAD uh, files. And then when I select the file there, and I want to go to options, typically I like to have that hue and stitch option on, so that way there's any discrepancies, it goes out and does, kind of fixes it for you. In some cases, they might not, so that's why you need me to come back and uh, fix them. So to keep... Uh, Consistent, I'm going to simply just change the color there. That's pretty much it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to go back and select that uh, uh, cutout right there. Notice when I have here, obviously, my design intent uh, panel comes up and tells me based on the selection I made, uh, the design intent looks at symmetry, concentric, offset, line holes, coplanar. But once I start moving, you could turn them on and off. Obviously, I want to leave it on because I want uh, SolidWorks to just kind of do all the work for me. So once I set that, I could look at the other side here, and that's when it's going to have the effect on it because it's going to look and see once I do that, uh, you see the symmetric concentric come up there, and you can see basically what's happening on the other side, right? Even though I selected that one simple cutout right here, but it maintains symmetric, it maintain, uh, maintain uh, concentric and symmetric, and you can see that being done on the opposite side there. So therefore, it's a lot of the work is doing for me now. At this point, I could either drag it dynamically or enter a value, which in this case is obviously 1.25. That's exactly what we're doing in the other part here. So this time, I'm going to go ahead and select that surface here and drag the, my uh, steering wheel, lock it into the center of that uh, cutout right there. And at that point, look what happened there. It picked up symmetric. So it's going to go ahead and uh, do the same thing on the other side. Uh, I could enter a value there, which I've done there. Uh, and now I have exactly what I wanted. Now on the bottom there, so all I need to do is grab that surface and either start dragging it whichever direction, enter a value, uh, or simply want to push it over to the other level there. And at this point, I go ahead and enter a value of 3.28 and you're done there. Now basically what I've done here, I've modified this part using from a different CAT system, modified it and bring it in right now. The next step is, I'm going to go ahead and add a draft, right? Now, I have the ability to go ahead and uh, select the draft command, but uh, that requires me to select multiple surfaces. So I don't want to do that. I want SolidWorks to just do that for me. Again, that's uh, synchronous technology doing that for me. And it picked up symmetric on planar and dynamically drag it or enter a value, and you're done there. All right. So you see how I've done and modify a part uh, from a different CAS system, modify and maintain the design intent using synchronous technology. All right, so let me go ahead and... Uh... Okay, the next one is going to be... Uh, working with import files, right? So this is where you go ahead and, uh, let's say, as an e-basis, now you don't have to do this all the time. Uh, you could do that and say, for example, I need to recognize the holes here in this case. Uh, do you have to do it all the time? Absolutely not. Uh, the, the neat thing about this, it goes out and finds that recognizes the holes, and it puts them also on your Pathfinder. And you can see that right here, how it recognized them. You can see how they're highlighted on the part. And the great thing about this, also uh, able to be, be a variable table. So you, you have the ability to kind of uh, change this, uh, whether using other formulas and things like that. So nice tool there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. And you can see that basically, I'm gonna go simply go select uh, the whole recognizer command. There it is right there. And you can see how quickly it just went in there and found them. Let me just pull this a little bit to the side here. You can kind of see that uh, compare side to side. And as I hover over that, you can see that in the graphics there, on the part, 
it goes out and points them out for me. Now I could click on that part and say, you want maybe I want to change the counter board, uh, threaded counter sync, whatever the case might be. Uh, so it's really nice way to kind of see decide at that point if you wanted to change it. Now notice what happened here. It did put them in my uh, Pathfinder and it highlights them on the part there or in the part it highlights in the Pathfinder. And then if I select the, ch the, the holder there, the handle, if I wish to go ahead and change that specifically one, that specific uh, hole to a different uh, type of hole, uh, I'll be able to do that as well. Very neat way to do that. All right, so the next one, it uh, has two functionalities. You have the select manager. Uh, that's a tool that allows you to select features. And this case happens to be you know part that came from uh, SolidWorks where you're able to select that even though it's kind of a, think of it as a dumb model. There was really nothing, no feature that was that defined that that was a, uh, a feature there, but it goes on and finds that for you. And then you get to find the pattern. So it goes on and recognizes a pattern. In this case, it's an instance of four. And if I wish to change that, I could go ahead and say, you know what, I want to have an instance of seven now. So let me go ahead and show you that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select the command. And I'm going to zoom a little closer here so you can kind of get a better view for that. Um, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and activate the select manager and recognize that feature. Once I've done that, it goes out and looks for me. Instead of selecting them or windowed in, it does that for me. So once I've done that, I go ahead and select the recognizer command. And you can see that I quickly went and found that uh, pattern right there. Now, uh, I wish to go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to accept that. And you can see that I put that pattern in the pathfinder right there. And if I wish to change that, say, I, for example, I want it from four instances, I want it to be seven. And you can see how instantly went in there and put seven. And how about the diameter too? I want to change that from uh, that default or uh, whatever value it was to two inches diameter. And it goes out and puts them for me. Now I could come back again and say, you know what, forget that. I want to change that to. 12 now. So I go ahead and say enter 12 and now it got 12. So it went from uh, uh, you know something that was just a feature in that, recognizing that feature, entering, uh, recognizing pattern, uh, also uh, telling it if you wanted how many instances you want, not only that but also the diameter as well. So a pretty neat functionality there. Okay. So the next one is working uh, with a fully modified uh, constrained part, a model with this that was um, fully constrained. And you have the ability to do that. You could add dimensions to a model. In this case, for example, if I added the dimension of uh, maybe a distance of uh, that surface, I'm sorry. If I want to move that surface uh, 0.75 from this, and even though uh, everything else is constrained here, and once I do, it does that, and that's because uh, maybe my intent was to do that, so I didn't just go out and start moving parts or surfaces without realizing that maybe I have just moved something. Uh, so you want to constrain it at a point where it's not going to move easily or just accidentally or anything like that. So let's say the example I have here that I've selected the surface right here. I want to move it at 0.75. And once I enter that value, it goes into solution manager mode. And that gives me a visual of what is causing that from moving this direction. In other words, this direction, right, 0.75. And it highlights dimensions for me and tells me what you need to do. In other words, I need to flex the dimension to allow it to change. Let me go ahead and take that uh, uh, demo here. So here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and simply select uh, the smart dimension. I'm going to simply add a dimension there uh, from there to here. And keep in mind, this part was imported from a different CAD system, right? So I could go ahead and lock that dimension. I'm going to select another surface there and drag that dimension right about there. And I'm noticing... I'm clicking the lock dimension, okay? So now that, let's say for example, that I want to move this, this surface in that direction, uh, obviously it's giving me an indication that say, hey, listen, something's uh, prevented from doing that. And if you accept that, say, yo, well, I need to know what it is. So uh, at that point, you can have the color coding legend at the bottom, at the, uh, right here. And basically what you need to look is for the error path. And you can see the brown type of uh, the color there that's giving me indication that that's what's holding it back. So you can see there right there, it's coming back all the way to the uh, uh, origin back there, X, Y, Z origin there. And now if I want to go ahead and accept that, yes, I need to flex that dimension so I could have that. Notice what it does, it gives me the value of the previous value uh, dimension as well. And I accept that, now the, the dimension or the surface of that, uh, the dimension has changed based on the uh, allowing it to flex. All right, some other functionality, uh, some really neat stuff here. So if I needed to come back and simply select this um, uh, this features here, 
uh, and maybe move in whatever direction, whether it's out here or inside here. What it does is you see the synchronous kind of doing that, and you can see that's picked up concentric aligned holes, and you can see that even overlaps of other features and puts in the rounds in there as well. Uh, pretty neat way to kind of show that real quick. So let me go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that uh, feature right there, and you can see that design temp uh, window came up there, panel. And you can see if I started dragging it, and if I goes out or in, or if I start dragging it in, you see that round right there kind of uh, uh, overlapping on the other feature as well. And maybe that's what I wanted to do. That's really neat how to, how to go back and do that. Now, just think about that. How would you do that in parametric uh, history? All right. The next one is how to go and uh, use the face relate. So in this case, I'm completely turning off design intent, and I want to go ahead and apply the rules. Uh, I don't want design intent doing that for me. I don't want synchronous technology doing that for me. I want to go ahead and do that on my own. So basically what you would do is uh, you go ahead and turn that uh, design intent off, and you have the face relate uh, to, uh, commands right here. So basically what you do is you'll start with something like this and finish with something like this, right? Where you go ahead and add those relationships manually. All right, let me go ahead and show you that. All right, so I'll go ahead and select that. See, there's my command right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and select parallel. So I wanna select this surface right here and you notice I turned off my design intent. I don't want it on. So I'm gonna do that manually. So I'm gonna select that surface, accept that and select the top, top surface of that and accept that. You see how it highlighted, give me a preview before I accept that, and I'm going to accept that uh, relationship. Notice what it does in my Pathfinder. It goes out and places that for me now. And I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, perpendicular, and I accept that. I'm going to select the other top surface there, and accept that. And again, if you look at my uh, Pathfinder there, it puts it in there. And this time I'm going to select concentric. I want this to be concentric with this surface right here. And see how it gives me a little preview of that, and accept that. And now you're there now. What I've done here, basically, I went in there manually put these relationships. Uh, okay, so next one is going to be, the next one is going to be live section. All right, so basically, sometimes if you find yourself in, in a situation where you need to put in a, a think of it as a slicing through the part and kind of a, 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 having a sketch uh, apply there and that slice there. And if you want a quick modification, if it's something that's so difficult, uh, you could go ahead and place that there. So let me go ahead and show you that. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and select the command there. And it's going to be live section there. And simply select the surface that I want to start with and simply use my steering wheel, either dynamically uh, drag it, and I could place it in literally anywhere. If I want to slice it through the whole part, that's fine. But my, my point here is that I want to go ahead and simply show you that right here so I could grab that uh, using the dimension and, and, and drive that. And so it makes it easier for me to maybe make a quick modifications to that. Notice I selected the center of that. Now once I'm done with that, I can come back, enter a value, or dynamically drag it, and you can kind of see that's being updated there. Uh, there it goes right there. And then maybe I want to try something a little bit different here. I'm going to go back and use a concentric uh, and select that surface and, and make that concentric with the other one right there. Now it's, those are concentric. And then you come back and select the dimension. You see that's notice that there's a concentric there. And come back and select the dimension. And now we'll look what's happening here. Now that everything's concentric, remember that we select the center of that uh, live section there. Now it's concentric with everything else. So no words, the other part's gonna move along with the right there as well. So that's kind of neat way of using and modifying some of the components there. All right, the next one, reorder rounds. Uh, and this is where maybe, uh, you know, if, if whatever the case might be, you, you might not be able to machine it for machining purposes, uh, camp purposes, whatever the case might be, but you have the ability to go ahead and uh, reorder the round. And again, keep in mind, this is a, a CAD a model from a different CAD system. So I could simply right, select the surface. All I need to do is come back and right click on it. You can see how it changed that order there. I could do the same thing with this other one here, right click and order that as well. And then I come back and right click this one again, maybe I don't like that one, I could go back and go back to the same one it was earlier. And you can see how I would go back and obviously reorder those uh, rounds there. 
All right, so the uh, final results, right? So we went from uh, you know something that looked like this. It was a, uh, it was a, in this case it was a model from a different CAT system. It was a there was no features added to that. It was just think of it as a, a dumb model. Uh, models that they they come from different CAT systems, but we have the tools here to kind of back and uh, regenerate those uh, features there. It adds a neat basis. Uh, you see that right here. We went and, and looked at the holes there, the patterns there. Uh, we went and he actually selected the, uh, uh, we went and uh, the, used the, um, the face relate uh, where we could go and actually apply the relationships permanently without having to use design intent to do anything like that. As you uh, witnessed today, uh, as stated earlier in the slide there, these are your options when working with the uh, CAD files that come from other CAD systems. All right, so kind of recap here. This is basically what we covered, right? Methods of importing CAD data, overview of both modeling paradigms, part modeling in history and synchronous technology, key features functions on the imported part from uh, different CAD systems, uh, using accelerator share makes the design cycle much easier to collaborate with other CAD users. All right, so let me go into the uh, polls here, uh, questions here. So the poll question is, the first one is, uh, is Accelerator share free uh, and what is the storage? There is a 30-day trial, trial and you need to have a subscription, uh, a subscription pay as a service. Uh, and the minimum uh, storage is 500 gigabytes per license. Uh, poll, poll question uh, number two, can you recreate features in tree from another CAS systems? Well, as you, see you saw today, I was able to create features but not as in what uh, traditionally uh, other CAD systems recreate the features. It's called a feature recognized in other CAD systems. Uh, we tend, we actually took that functionality when synchronous technology was introduced. But we do have a feature as so, uh, based on geometry selection. The feature that most people are, are familiar, or feature recognized that most other people are re uh, familiar with, is the try to reconstruct the model as it was created on its, on its original design intent. So question, uh, poll, poll three, question three, uh, does other CAS system have synchronous technology? The only ones that have synchronous technology is Solid Edge and NX. All right, so again, thank you. Uh, thank you for choosing Switch Technologies as a resource for CAD knowledge and solutions. If you'd like to contact me or Karina, please uh, hear our, our emails. Or if you wanna contact our technical support team for any questions, Thank you again, and I hope to uh, hear from you soon. Now I'd like to turn it over back to uh, Karina as, she, as we will head into the Q&A section here. Karina? All right, thank you so much, Manny. I appreciate you being here today and covering the topics in Solid Edge in a multi-CAD environment for everybody. Uh, as promised, I would like to make a few announcements. So with that being said, I would like to cue a drum roll. All right, so announcement number one is that right now, for a limited time, all Solid Edge simulation products are 50% off. And if you like what you've seen so far, or if you've had a chance to check out what is new in Solid Edge 2022, you know just how many capabilities and features and functions are available to you as a designer. These are really great for a company, they're great for an individual user. So if you're curious about this discount and this limited time promotion, please reach out to Manny and he can get you more information. All right, so announcement number two and my personal favorite, some of you might remember when we had Solid Edge University a couple years back, we are actually going to bring that event back this year as well, and that's going to be coming up in the next couple months. So we have a date set for April 13th, which is a Wednesday at 10 a.m., and this is a virtual event, so you can you know view and tune in from anywhere that you are located, and this is basically just to learn the latest and greatest in Solid Edge all for free. It's all completely complimentary to you, which is also why it's one of my favorites, so we can serve you as a community. Uh, with topics covering wiring and harness design, simulation, Solid Edge Cam Pro, and PDM, you will learn a wide array of skills to utilize on the daily. Be sure to visit our website to register for the event.
All right, so now that I've covered everything, I'd like to go ahead and get started with the Q&A section. Uh, we're going to have this open for a little bit, so you'll have a few minutes to submit your questions. And Manny is going to get ready to prepare any answers for you. Any remaining questions that are on the table, we can, of course, cover via email if we are not able to do so during this event. Um, so go ahead and go into the chat section right now and go ahead and ask any questions you might have. Uh, we will do our best to respond right here in a timely manner. But as I said, if you miss anything or if something comes to mind a little bit later, you can always shoot us an email, uh, especially Manny with his contact information being present right now. Uh, don't forget to just capture the QR code currently on the screen for Manny's contact information. You can save that directly to your phone, and you can also just reach out to him with any questions or comments in further discussion after the end of this webinar. So go ahead and get started in submitting those questions, but for the rest of you who are completely done with this event, who don't need any answers to anything, thank you again for joining, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.